Hello friends. Today's episode is another proof of concept video involving the Raspberry Pi. Now, what is it about? Well, many of you sure know these USB microscopes here that are very cheap by now, but are often very poorly made and often deliver low resolution, low quality video material. On the other hand, there are also so-called digital microscopes which already come with a camera and even a display. Also, by now, professional microscope manufacturers offer these modules here that can be used instead of a classical eyepiece with older microscopes, basically upgrading them to a digital microscope and delivering HD video quality, as you will see later in this video. So in this video, I'm attempting a DIY approach to this whole topic, buying a microscope for very little money that has a reasonable build quality though, and upgrading that to a digital microscope by using a Raspberry Pi computer and a camera module that was specifically designed and is sold as a peripheral device for the Raspberry Pi. And in order to allow for a direct comparison between this self-made approach and a commercial solution, I have also ordered one of these eyepiece USB cameras here and we will take a look at the actual footage later in this video. But first, let us take a brief look at the actual microscope that I bought for this video. So I got this entire set here for only five euros just the other day here in Cologne. And well, you might pay up to 50 euros for something like this. And I guess that this microscope, which was manufactured by the German company Bresser, might be from around the early 1990s. And I guess that it would have cost something around 150 euros in today's money that is back in that time but even if you're not as lucky as i am with these kind of deals i guess you can get an older microscope for around 20 euros at basically any time and if you're a little patient you might get it as cheap as just a few bucks and as you can see this set came not just with the basic microscope frame and some of the optical components but also some pre-prepared slides with specimens on them and also all the components for new slides so that you could make your own specimens. But we're not going to focus here on biology or anything like that. You can use a microscope like this just as well for taking a look at microelectronics, for example. The microscope set comes with three different objectives or objective lenses in German Objektive which are stored in these small transparent plastic tubes here. And then they are attached to the so-called objective turret in German revolver. And of course, these three objectives have different sizes and different factors of magnification. On top of the microscope, I remove this black dust cap here and insert an eyepiece in German called ocular. And there are again three eyepieces with three different factors of magnification and if you want to have the total magnification you have to multiply the two factors of the objective lenses and of the eyepiece of course. At the bottom of the microscope you typically find some kind of illuminating system. In this case it is just a mirror and in the future I guess I will have to upgrade this by adding some kind of LED system to this because this is really the most basic and a very unsatisfying type of illumination. On this black so-called stage here, Objektisch in German, these slide clamps are inserted. And then we open this box here with our pre-prepared slides and we pick a specimen, in this case the larva of the silkworm. And we put that onto the stage and clamp it down with the slide clamps. And I have now ordered this microscope USB camera module here which was also manufactured by Bressa, the same company that actually made the microscope back in the 90s. And I paid 60 euros for this. And I will now set this up and show you some footage. As you can see, this set also comes with three different adapter pieces uh, that can be used to, to fit this module onto differently sized eyepiece tubes. And the eyepiece is removed and the USB camera module is inserted and then it is simply connected via USB to this laptop here. With that said came a software called ChemLab Lite and you can see that right here. It can be used for either still pictures or HD video recordings. And because I have no real illumination system, 
I use one of the lamps on my workbench and rearrange the mirror so that light is shining through the slide. And now I'm actually starting a recording while I try to rearrange the lights until I get an optimal picture. And now let's take a look at the actual recording that I took from that camera. And here we can already see a lot of tiny scratch marks and imperfections on the surface of the glass slide. And here we have found our silkworm. And you can recognize pretty distinctly a lot of the different body parts of the larva. But there are obvious problems with this really improvised illumination system. I guess that a portion of the ambient light is reflected on the top surface of the slide rather than shining through it. Then there's also some color issue and a little bit of flicker, but I guess a lot of this could be fixed by simply cleaning all the optical systems and having an actual illumination system. Okay, so the circumstances are really improvised and bad, but they will be the same for both of our setups, so I guess the comparison will still be fair. And here I have my Raspberry Pi 2 Model B board inside a transparent plastic enclosure that I bought for it a couple of months ago. And connected to it is a five megapixels camera module. It is connected via a flat flex cable to the camera slot on the board itself. And that camera is a third party model, which costs around 20 to 25 euros at this point in Germany. And I will put a link to that in the video description. I, however, do not know if this exact model is available anywhere else in the world, but you don't have to pick this exact model to do it. I'm sure though that there are a lot of similar products available online in other countries as well. Since this is just a proof of concept video, everything you see here is quite improvised. And so I attach the enclosure of the Raspberry Pi to the microscope frame with a simple zip tie. Next, I use some duct tape and put that onto the end of the eyepiece tube in order to have some electrical insulation between the metal surface of that cutoff tube and the PCB of the camera module. And I cut a hole into that so that that threaded black plastic tube that is bolted to the PCB of the camera module can be put onto the eyepiece tube temporarily. In the meanwhile, I have set up the Raspberry Pi with a display, keyboard, mouse, and a Wi-Fi stick. And I start up the Raspberry Pi, and now we can make our first experimental video recording. And then I type in the command raspivid minus O, test video 07.h264 minus T 60,000. And that means raspivid, record video with the Pi cam, minus O, output file name, which is then followed, test video 07. Point H264 is the name of the video codec used, minus T, time, 60,000 milliseconds. So this command means use the Pi cam to record a one minute long video and name that output file test video 07.H264. And once you hit enter, that command will be executed instantaneously and a preview of what you film will pop up on the screen. So let's just take a look at the actual recording that I grabbed from the Raspberry Pi camera. Now, here we again see details of the imperfections on the surface of the slide and I'm looking for our silkworm here and I'm adjusting the focus on the microscope manually. And here we have something that looks like the glue that was used on the slide and I'm still looking, we're still a little off, but we eventually find our silk one and we can see a lot of details here. It looks a little different than before. We also have what seems to be an interference on the screen that I think is generated by the high frequency flickering of my LED lights here. But this is enough for me to say that we have a proof of concept here. From here on out, this video will be about some basic improvements on this concept. So first I want to get rid of this completely improvised situation here where the camera module is just glued to the eyepiece tube with duct tape. So what I'm doing is to use this old dust cap here that you might remember from earlier in the video. And what I'm doing is to simply drill a hole into that so that I can just insert the plastic part that is already sitting on the PCB into this dust cap. 
And at this moment, I'm keeping this threaded plastic part that sits on the PCB because I do not want to destroy the original mechanism of this Pi camera because maybe I want to use it for other purposes in the future. But this is not everything. I also want to improvise a shorter eyepiece tube. And I will do that by using this used tube here that held vitamin C pills before. And I will gradually shorten that and see if I can enhance the picture detail slash uh, image section. Because as you have seen before, this Bressa USB camera module actually has a larger CMOS chip and it is sitting deeper inside the eyepiece tube. And I think that I can counter that by shortening down the eyepiece tube. But that vitamin C plastic tube is white inside and that is not good. And that's why I just bought a sheet of black cardboard for a couple of cents, cut out a piece and insert that inside the plastic tube to make it black. Now I make a little spacer from another piece of cardboard and I temporarily attach that new eyepiece tube to the microscope. And let's see if we are seeing any improvements here. And the picture obviously looks somewhat different. I can't really tell if we're already having a really larger picture detail here. But you can clearly see that I have introduced some dirt in the optical system. That's small filings or uh, snippets of the plastic that I ground off when I cut and ground the plastic tube. So that has to go out. But I think that I should try to shorten the tube even more. And that's exactly what I have done now. And I also rearranged the enclosure of the Raspberry Pi cam because of the limitations of the length of the flat flex cable. And here you can see me recording again and taking pictures. And while we're at it, let me show you how you take still pictures with a Pi cam. It is fairly easy. You just type in the command raspy still for a still picture. And then again, minus O output file name. And then for example, test picture point jpg for a jpeg file and that is exactly what i'm doing right here and what you can also already see here is that if you take a still picture a larger section of the photographed object is actually to be seen on the output file rather than when you record a video but we'll take a closer look at that in just a second and compare different pictures and videos and I shortened the eyepiece tube even a little more. This time I removed the plastic tube altogether and only used a small ring of black cardboard to block out light. And now let's just compare some photographs and video footage taken with first the original tube, then the shortened eyepiece tube and at last the super short eyepiece tube. So this first picture here was taken with the commercial Bressa Microcular USB camera module. Here we have a picture taken with that third party Pi cam and the original eyepiece tube. Here a picture taken with the shortened self-made eyepiece tube and here one taken with the super short self-made eyepiece tube. And likewise here some footage first from the commercial Bressa unit from the very beginning of this video. And here in comparison some video material from the shortened tube setup and from the super short eyepiece tube setup. So even though there is still much room for improvement of course, I think that this idea is feasible and I recommend you to experiment with that yourself because it's really not all that expensive to do and can be an interesting way to learn more about these Raspberry Pi cameras, for example. But there's one more thing that I want to talk about briefly and that is that if you remember, the output file format of the raspivit command were of the H.264 format and that is a video file format that cannot typically be played by most video players or can also not be used by most editing programs. And I myself wasted a huge amount of time on looking for freeware conversion programs that run on Windows for this. And what I ended up doing is to use FFmpeg 
on Linux. So what you should do is to use either your Raspberry Pi or another computer with Linux on it, install FFmpeg and use that to convert H.264 files to MP4. I myself did it on one of the laptops that were given to me by a viewer a couple of months ago. And that is because FFmpeg is not readily available for some releases of the Raspbian operating system. Okay guys, so that was today's episode. And if there is a lot of interest from your side, then I might proceed in the future to improve this idea further by, for example, adding lights on the bottom of the frame and maybe also on top so that you can not only use lights, but for example, take pictures of microelectronics where light is shining on the PCB from above. Maybe it would also be possible to experiment with a display for the Raspberry Pi and build something like a real standalone digital microscope similar to what I have shown you in the very beginning of the video. But that's it for now. I hope you like this and see you soon.